First of all, this is just consumant, but in CQB everything here is consumant. I have no idea really what gives uh, cover. Makes sense? But when I'm opening the door, what I'm trying always to do is to open it gently. And by doing so, the door will stop around 90 to 150 degrees. Now, since I'm alone, we talked about it. I'm exposed to a, ver a, a, a variety of angles. And one of the problems with slice, when you work alone, is that the more you slice and slice, the more you start to give away. By having the door like this, you offer yourself concealment. Yes, I know if someone will be there, he could shoot me through the door, but then already I will see it from this angle because I will, I will hear the movement, maybe I will see shadow or maybe he will start moving because he wants to see as well. If he see the door and he can't see me, he will go around it. You get the point? But this comes into play in situations where I'm standing like this. It gives me this consumment buffer in case when someone else start, uh, comes into the room while I'm standing here. Make sense? Okay guys, so basically we talked about the angles, different room shapes, we talked about how we can manipulate those angles into our advantage, right? We focus primarily on clearing those rooms with open doors. So what we're going to do now is we will focus on clearing these rooms with closed doors. Does it affect the angles or it remains the same angles in definitions? Stay safe, stays the same. It stays the same. Everything system stays the same. The footwork stays the same, but you will see, okay? There are two uh, ways of clearing rooms. The first one is what everybody referred to today is as dynamic entries or what we know uh, primarily as dump entries. In dynamic entries, everything is done quickly and the consumption of the angles in the room is done inside. Meaning instead of trying to see the room from outside, I'm literally going inside and I'm solving problem while being inside of the room, okay? Um, then we have the other way of clearing rooms, which is basically slice-based entries. Probably the majority of you are familiar with that, uh, with terms like slicing the pie, incriminal pie, sliding doors, stuff like this. Um, in slice-based entries, basically the majority of the clearance is done from outside of the room, meaning we try to avoid over committing the room until we really have to. Okay, so for example, if I can clear 80% from outside, I will do it and only then I will go inside. Those are the two main concepts we have. One is favoring movement, the other one is uh, uh, favoring uh, safety. Between the two concepts, uh, we have uh, hybrid entries. Hybrid entries are basically, for example, entries like uh, you slice 50% from outside and then you go dynamically into the room or stuff like the incriminal pie, where people will do rainbow around the door and then will crisscross inside, okay? But primarily, slice-based entries, dynamic-based entries. So, first of all, threshold, that's the frame of the entry point, okay? It may dictate how fast I can go through it, and it may dictate how much I can control or expose for myself. Make sense? In daily life or reality, I have three types of thresholds. Tight, standard, wide. Let's go through it really quick. Standard, I think it's pretty cool to everybody, but a tighter uh, threshold will allow me to see little into the room and it will not allow me to move uh, two people at once through the doorway. Makes sense? Good. Fun fact, the, 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 sh the corners, which the hard corners are becoming even deeper because from here I can slice less and less uh, uh, from the room, okay? But you will see it later. Then we have the wide uh, threshold. Uh, the wide thresholds are allowing us to move faster into the room with two people, even three people. It is easier to slice and control, but the only big issue that we have <coughs> is that with the wider uh, threshold, um, since I can see so much, I'm also losing much more, much faster. Because for example, if I'm slicing from here all the way here, due to the fact that the threshold is much longer, I have much more information which is away, which is in peripheral view, and at some point I'm losing, okay? You'll see it later. It's actually very interesting in force and force. The next type of structure that we have is what we call a tubular shape or linear, okay? I think it's self-explanatory, so I will ask you the following question. Where do we have it in daily life? Bus. Bus is very good. Trains, trams, Planes. airplanes. Very good, okay? And of course, tunnels, which is in Israel also is a really big topic, right? 
Okay, let's go through it really quick. The first issue I have with tubular rooms is the fact that it's a compressed environment. Okay, as you can see, it's a very narrow environment. Normally also, uh, it will be relatively free in the middle because obviously people have to move from A to B. However, it's still compressed, which means if we will fight while running into this room, a lot of guns will be compressed together. Okay, so the probability of friendly fire is pretty high. Second issue that we have is that essentially, essentially, you have only two directions of fire, like we talked about the L-shape. Fun fact, an L-shape, technically, even if it's a fatter room, it's basically two tubular shapes together. You get it? Perception. Okay, the directions of fire. Next issue that we have, I actually covered it already. There is no uh, structural or uh, furniture cover or concealment. And the next issue that we have, especially with inexperienced people, is the issue of overpressure and friendly fire. By overpressure, I'm referring to a situation where someone is shooting next to me. Individuals, especially in a police environment, who are not used to it, for them it might be too much. It will be a really a high contributor for stress when they will experience it for the first time when they're fighting someone. Because after all, when someone's shooting next to you, especially when you don't have like this fancy ear protection, it's not so comfortable, right? Second, in terms of friendly fire, um, Again, we're looking here into a high probability of shooting each other as people are simply too, too close to each other, okay? Let's talk about um, direction uh, of opening or mechanism, okay? We have two directions of opening, okay? Push, pull. Push as of the door goes into the room, okay? You just went inside, but okay. Then we have pull, which means the door will go outside to me. So inward, outward, makes sense? Remember it as push-pull, okay? Perfect. Fun fact regarding corridors, normally by far doors will open into the rooms rather than away from the room, why? Because corridors and staircases are highways of buildings, okay? They are used for mobility. Just keep it in mind, fun fact, okay? Good. Let's do a quick summary. So we have three types of room shapes which have consistency in, uh, in reality, right? Good. Before we will summarize them, visually on the wall, I want uh, to ask you for those shapes. What are those? Box shaped? L shaped. Tabular shape. shape. What is an easy corner? From the outside, you can fight it, you can bail it and so on. What is a hard corner? I can't see in the, uh, you can't see until it's too late, right? Perfect. Okay, now what we're gonna do is the following. Um, during my military time, I was used to work a lot with floor plans. That's also basically how I started to realize that there is consistency to these shapes. But this is the point where I, I want to make sure that you're not thinking like robots, that you're able to see a picture and manipulate it based on the information you just got from me. Okay, good. Now, this is a classical example where uh, I looked into, which was really important for me. It's really nice that we have this box shaped, L shape and tubular, but we all know as fighters that in reality, the circumstances are going to expand a little bit beyond the clear definition we have in the classroom, right? So those uh, three types of room shapes are really depending on the, 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 the perspective you have into the room. Small tip, if you are able to understand that, for example here, that from the moment the door is opening, I can see that area and therefore it remains for me just a box, you will be able on the go to apply the tactic and adjust it to what is coming in front of you. For example, right here, we will throw the running the rabbit tactic or the NDI-8 uh, concept and so on and so on. Yeah. Still we have another point. We cannot only enter the room by the door. Very good. We also enter through the window. Entering from the window, it's totally another perspective. Perfect. That was the next point. Very good. So for example, if I'm coming here through the window, which you can see right here, the perspective changes. Tactically, it's not the L shape for me anymore. It's a box shape because from here I can control that area perspective but still the consistency of the three shapes remains always it just depends on the perspective okay strong and weak side of the of the entry point or the door basically okay so it's more easier uh, language wise okay primarily uh, when we're looking into this working space um, I have a weak side and I have a strong side and this concept of strong and weak side is oriented around the idea how fast am I becoming exposed to any angle in the room from the moment the door is being interacted. So for example, uh, 42, come here. You will be like, let's say, right here, okay? Okay, good. 
He is right now on the weak side. Anyone knows why? Let me show you. From the moment that me as a teammate whatsoever, or he will open the door, and let's say the door is still here. Can anyone see him? No, correct? So he has time to get uh, uh, control on the gun again, to bring the hand back, right? Long story short, it will take quite a long, long time until we, he will become exposed to the angles inside the room, okay? So, weak side. Put your hand on the handle. Just open it. You see, by the time he's opening, he's still not exposed for anything and he has the time to regain control on the weapon and be prepared. Weak side, okay? Why do we call it the weak side? Because in the end, in a bigger uh, team capacity, it means that if I'm standing here, I'm not able to react to the room as fast as possible. Because in the end, when I'm opening a door, it doesn't matter what context, you trigger the room in one way or another. Make sense? Okay. Okay, guys, um, I know that probably it's gonna be very clear to you, but um, I would like to go through the level of danger that individual can experience as he uh, clear L shapes. Um, again, it will be pretty simple and logical, but the reason why I want to go through it is because I think it's really important for you to understand what level of danger means what to me, okay? So let's imagine that you breach the door over here, it's broken, over there you throw a nuclear bomb, everybody are dead, and the only thing you need to clear is this area and that area. Make sense? Good. Windows are out of the game, just to make it simple. Okay, good. As I'm entering the room, and let's say I am standing here, this area is still what we consider to be green-wise safe. Still relatively safe for me. Why? I dominate it. I can still dominate. I can still maybe work here from the doorway. All right. What else? Reaction time, right? I still have a better reaction time, especially if someone tries to attack me with the knife whatsoever. Okay, let's say I progressed very close to the apex. It's still not ultimate danger. Why? In a few words. I still got some cover and very good. I still have room which I can bail to. You see that room over here? So for example, if I will encounter a heavy resistance over there, which I cannot see, I can start uh, advanced procedures of fighting from the depth. For example, stepping off and going here. Make sense? Perfect. The next area will be, of course, the most dangerous, which I think it's very obvious to everybody, the last point of cover and concealment. From the moment I'm beyond that thing, that's it. Okay, but I think it's very clear. Why do I show you these colors like in a kindergarten? Because later in Force and Force, talking about my own failures, um, you tend to neglect some of this stuff and you get focused into forward, 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 forward. And that's where people are getting hit. And understanding where it's really dangerous for me and when it's not, and being able to manipulate it, it's half of the fight, okay? So just keep it in mind. Now, here there is actually a little bit of shadow, so I think it, could be, it, it will be a really good example. Um, and pay attention. I'm going to open the door. You see how quick the light comes out, right? From the moment the door is interacted and slightly opened, he can start working, okay? So strong and weak side. Why, why is it important to define it? Thank you. For the following reason. It's important to understand that limited penetration or any kind of a slice-based entries are basically uh, uh, an ambush in motion. And for many years, across many units, um, the doors were just kicked or just open and people ran through it. The way I see it, these doors are concealment, they are not cover, but they can allow me to manipulate the angles to my needs. So for example, in, in later in bigger capacities, one of the things we do is the following, uh, 42, come over here. So for example, if I'm standing here and I know that there is such a thing as a weak and strong side, I know that the guy who's opening here is able to open it and from here the guys who are standing here can walk through them as fast as possible. While here I have the time to regain my weapon and so on and so on. Okay, thank you. Makes sense until now? This is really important because for years we saw it that across different units that either they just opened doors or just kicked it and ran through it. And often in force and force, as soon as resistance starts around the door, you'll see guys standing like this or whatsoever and then they're getting hit. Okay, so this is really important. We want to set ourselves to success. Make sense? Perfect. So, weak side, as of I am coming from the handle side, I'm opening the door and the door is still in front of me. Provides me concealment. Strong side, 
means I'm away from the device that allows me to open the door, in this case, the handle. And from the moment the door is open, I can see into the room. Make sense? And when I can see, someone else can see me as well. Good. Okay, let's talk about door interaction in a one-man capacity. So in other words, we're going back to the one-man room clearance, but with doors. So right now, just, just for a second, ignore the rest of the doors here and windows and so on, and think about you working in this corridor and you needing, needing to clear this room. Okay, so you have to clear it, but the door is closed, right? We didn't talk about it. So I have two ways of clearing this room. Either I'm gonna kick it or just open it and do my thing, or I can manipulate it to my need. Now here it's even more important than a four-man capacity clearance. And why? Because I'm alone. If I'm alone, what kind of a problem I'm facing? I have to do two, two things in one, like open door and still secure myself. Exactly, 360 plus working my objective, correct? What other kind of problems do I have when I work alone? Outnumbered. Outnumbered, okay. Good. So I have to be very selective in how much commitment I give to the problems at hand. Make sense? Okay. In the following procedure, what I will do is, I will work on under the assumption that here I don't have a big threat and that I need to clear this room. So think about it as like of kind, some kind of a search. I'm looking for something. Make sense? Good. All right, I will start from there. I will do a demonstration really quick, slow, just so you have a taste of what I'm, going to, of what I'm doing and then I will break it down. Okay, good. Okay, let's break down what I just did. First of all, I came from here. And the reason why I came from here was is that I want to show you the most complicated uh, approach to this problem, to this procedure, okay? I could always come from there and just open it in a few seconds, but I want to show you how it's done when you're coming away from the handle, okay? Good. So in the procedure, I came from here. When I came, I stopped in an hour angle. I stopped in an hour angle because just like we learned before, I have to do your orientation check. When I'm orienting myself, I am looking to this area, I am hearing, and I'm taking a breath. I'm taking a decision if I want to clear this room. But there is another thing that we haven't done uh, uh, with open doors that we have to do now, and that is also check the door itself. When I will look into the door, I will collect information. Is there a glass here? Maybe the door is higher, like broken below or cut or whatever, and it's higher. Is there smoke coming out? Is there some kind of wires here that's I recognize on the handle? Because maybe someone was putting some electric behind it, whatever. You get it? So pay attention to the door. Where does it swing? Does it have some box here? Maybe there is a CCTV camera, whatever. Make sense? Good. So orientation check plus check the door itself, the mechanism. Okay. Now our angle, I stop, ta ta ta. From here, I rolled up a little bit, checked it 45 degrees or 90 degrees. You just look up like this. Doesn't look bad, and then I'm gonna cross. When I'm crossing, I don't want to see people doing this stuff. Why? Because one, you spend longer uh, in front of the door. Two, you make noise. So what I want you to do is, is to have the hips to the direction of travel, and like a tank, keep your turret towards the, da the danger area. So it will look like this. Make sense? Keep the movement leaner, okay? one direction, not all of this rainbow stuff. If I will do the rainbow stuff like this, I am now will becoming exposed to the rest of the corridor, plus more uh, doors up ahead. And in addition to that, I will spend more time around the doorway. Make sense? So movement wise, hips, direction of travel, weapon, direction of danger, the tank effect. Make sense? Good. When I'm crossing, I am not stopping at 90 degrees, and I'm not stopping at 45 degrees. I'm stopping in a narrow angle. Why? Again, we're in a one-man room clearance complex. Listen again. Maybe they had something inside them. It could be that someone was waiting for me and he saw me through the CCTV. For example, there is a camera or something and he started to shoot, but he missed me for whatever reason, right? If by nature, by, by default, I will go to the narrow angle, 
I'm already out of the way of danger. And now I know that this room, there is no way I'm going through that door anymore. So now I can say, okay, I can start fighting from there, whatever alternative point of entry, but uh, makes sense. Also another situation, for example, where maybe I feel that I expose myself because of a window behind me or whatsoever. Oh shit, it could be that they saw me. By nature, I will be away from, the narrow, from, from exposure because by default, I'm going to the narrow. Make sense? Good. Another reason. If by passing by, someone heard me because right now he was cleaning his dishes from the other side of the, of the wall, he might go out. So for example, you will go now into the room. Okay, you will stand here. And from the moment you hear me passing, you will open the door and you will go out, okay? You ready? Okay, if by nature I'm already here, stop. You see what happens, he comes out. Naturally, you have three, three angles which you can look to, while I have only one, so I can ambush him. Furthermore, if he wants to shoot me, he has to turn around, he has to see me first, he has to come to me. He has no freedom of movement, I have. Make sense? Good. Thank you very much. So, tank effect, narrow angle, stop. Hasty rotation check, just quick. I, for example, just to show you in the demonstration, I looked at that door because it was open. See, everything is fine, that's my objective. Okay, let's do it from here. 45 degrees, 90, weapon goes up, not down, the weapon goes up. Why? Flagging your head. Flagging. And the next thing that will happen is, With the long ah, boom, shooting my own, my own hand, leg, whatever, up. Another reason, if someone will come out, you can punch, whatsoever. Make sense? Also with long and you can't uh, stick in the handle, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, from here, weapon is up and the hand itself goes to the handle and just gently presses it. So you can feel the, the mechanism that everything is fine. And from here, you will just open it sli slightly. Again, one more time. You will gently open the door. Why? Why, for example, we are not doing stuff like, you know, like you often see with, you know, on YouTube with some cool music and guys with crap precision. Like, boom. Why does that make any sense? If it's blocked, a uh, door can, can come back to me and it's closed again. Exactly. It's also noisy. But don't, um, um, I'm losing my surprise. Like I'm taking so much time with the slowly opening door instead of Very bumping good. open the door, having a shock effect, yeah, more speed, more mm -hmm. aggressiveness. Okay, very good question. So first of all, why I will not kick the door? Bumping back, if there will be, for example, a corner fed, the door will come back to me. Second, and listen to this. Everybody in the corridor now, now know that an anomaly took place, something out of the normal. There is like a routine baseline of things that happen in the building. And all of a sudden, an acoustic signature indicates that something weird is going on here. Okay, so I want to avoid it. I'm alone, right? So if I open the door slowly, I will be able to avoid the bumping and the noise. In addition, if someone will be triggered into the room, the, the, the trigger will be much different. Think about it, if you are inside, even if you can't see me coming and there will be a, a, a surprise effect and you are just smoking and your gun is on the table and you hear someone kicking the door, your reaction will be much more obvious, right? You know something is threatening me, someone is in the building, someone is searching for me. But if maybe you will see the door or hear the door just open slightly, it will trigger a reaction, but your reaction will not be clear by definition because you will not know exactly what's happening here. You will be interested in, in checking the door, but open it. You will come to the door, but you will not be sure what's going on here. Maybe it was your partner who just went out for grocery uh, uh, shop. Maybe it's a neighbor who every day comes to you at this hour in the morning, whatever. You get the idea? No. It will trigger a reaction. And therefore comes the next part. As soon as I open the door, I'm going backwards. Narrow angle. You can also 45, but narrow angle is the best. And why? Because if you are triggered and you want to check it out, you have to come to the door, right? You have to see. Now, if you will come out, I can start identification. I can start addressing the problem already from outside instead of doing it inside. In addition, even if you will not come into uh, uh, the corridor here, just the fact that you will react and you will start moving around or you will do something like, <gasps> eh? what is this or whatever, will allow me to locate where is the human in the room. Oh, he's there. 
You get it? Good. So, 90 degrees, opening the door slightly forward, going backwards in our angle, orientation, everything is fine. Shoulder check, and from here the slice is the same. Slice, slice, 90 degrees, slice, isolate, isolate, attack the corner, shoulder check, and walking around. Last question. The door is like hanging in the 90 degrees. Why? Think about it. Concealment. Concealment. Here's a small trick. You don't have to do it, but it worked very good for me. First of all, this is just concealment, but in CQB, everything here is concealment. I have no idea really what gives me uh, cover. Makes sense? But when I'm opening the door, what I'm trying always to do is to open it gently. And by doing so, the door will stop around 90 to 150 degrees. Now, since I'm alone, we talked about it. I'm exposed to a, ver a, a, a variety of angles. And one of the problems with slice, when you work alone, that the more you slice and slice, the more you start to give away. By having the door like this, you offer yourself concealment. Yes, I know if someone will be there, he could shoot me through the door, but then already I will see it from this angle because I will, I will hear the movement, maybe I will see shadow or maybe he will start moving because he wants to see as well. If he see the door and he can't see me, he will go around it. You get the point? But this comes into play in situations where I'm standing like this. It gives me this concealment buffer in case when someone else start, uh, comes into the room while I'm standing here. Make sense? It's a small tip. And the last question, many questions, there is a lot of things to it. Why is the interaction with the door is from the weak side and not the strong side? Because you know, in our daily life, we are wired to think always that the weaker stuff are the negative stuff, right? But why here the weak side is actually a force multiplier? I'm coming from the strong side, I have to open it. And if I would open it from the strong side, I would be in the middle of the door and would stand in really there. Exactly, so come here. What I would like you to do is to open the door, and in reality, sometimes you will have to open the door from here, but we try to avoid it, okay? Good, okay, when I will say freeze, just freeze. Ready, okay, open the door. Weapon up, okay, and stop. You see how much weight was going forward, right? Plate carrier, the helm, the head, everything. In a team capacity, it's enough that someone will do something like this and he will fly into the room. Second, if someone will, bo will bounce from the side or from, from the back and will attack him, he will bring him down to the ground as fast as possible, okay? So just think about it, okay? Therefore, we try to avoid it, okay? Furthermore, and that's the last point, Come here again. Um, open the door. Okay. You saw how long it took him to get the weapon back into retention, right? That means he's already exposed for around three and a half to four seconds. Literally, you can test it. And by this time, he's not able to shoot anyone. That means if someone is ambushing him, and even if someone just saw him, he will not be able to address the threat because he's still working with his gun. And you know how it works. This is the moment where... Uh, Murphy Law steps in, right? Good. Are there any questions regarding this procedure? No. No? Okay. Small tip. Narrow angles are used for orientation and for making sure that you decide whether you want to start or not. Okay? Think about it. Don't forget when you're interacting with a door, weapon up and not down. Okay, you can get locked. Okay, good. Footwork. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. Eddie, I have a question. If the, the door starts like this, right? So what can say I say it gets stuck. You can move it, right? So okay. primarily now you have another corner over there. So yeah. what you will do, you will slice, and here you have to ask yourself, do I hear anything? Sure, I can sell you bullshit that you have to look through it, but in reality, sometimes I can't. So at the moment, let's say I can't see anything. Ask yourself, priority, do I hear there anything? Context-wise, do I know that there is a likelihood for anyone to be there? Yeah. If yes, take it very quick, go around and just get that corner. Okay? okay, you have to prioritize. Of course, if you hear something over there, then it's becoming a higher priority. But then ask yourself, where will my threat have higher uh, uh, mobility? 
Over there or over here? Okay, yeah? okay good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Because everything here, I put my back to north, I don't feel covered here on this side. Because this is right, yeah, the, yeah, right. So, you mean like if you're coming from here, procedure wise, you remember that you always have to go around for the weak size? All right, good. We talked about it actually, right? Yeah. Situations where you will have to. So, for example, here, also you don't have a working space, right? Yeah. So, there will be situations where you have to work from here. So, a few things I want to keep in mind one, you have to be faster, two, you have to be stable. So you can get even closer, but try to avoid stuff like doing things like this. Because later you see what happens with the, with the hand and the pistol, for example, right? So get closer to it. It's better one time and correct to open and then getting back. Now, it could also be that the door will be a little bit barricaded or stuck, whatever. So you want to be stable. If I'll have to fight with it from here, you see what happens to my tailing fit, right? It's not stable. So one time, correct, get to the door. Open it and go backwards as much as possible. But it's, okay. more it's much more offensive, you'll make more noises. You can also do it without noise, but then it will be much slower. So it's context dependent, yep. okay? Very good, you see, so, so he actually bailed back to the narrow, he saw that the door came back like an anomaly and he went into the narrow, that's very good, that's perfect, because then he was able to foresee if there is any problem coming, whatever. Okay, good, but that's why we have the strong side and the weak side, yeah. Good. Because you see what happens now, you are aware about it. You are aware about possibilities, you are aware about what makes sense when, and that's it. Okay? Yeah, good.